Five. I can definitely tell from this that we've been a factor there. You can see it's stuck to all the banners there. Oh, 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 they have a perimeter established, yeah, well, they're not letting people through. We understand that they are keeping people back and out of the way. Obviously, a lot of security uh, concerns, and uh, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice is going to be in the commissioner's box. Uh, so we'll get more and more activity as we get closer and closer to game time here in Detroit, Michigan. You know, we like to focus on the things that matter most to us. And it's not necessarily the game, it's the food, Gus. Yeah. That's what I'm worried about. Let me tell you, what are you finding there? What are you going to be making? Well, you know, it's there's, it's all about food. Sure, there's a lot of that too. But what I'm quickly learning after my you know seven-hour tour here in the supermarket is that it's also about the headgear and the costumes. And Mr. Jan Harris of Wilkins Township is here today with his seal head. And he didn't make this. This was a purchase. No, it was a purchase. Yes. And you're wearing it around today. What's the uh, plan here for this? Well, the plan is to show as many people as possible my steel head hat, mm -hmm. and uh, we want the Stillers to win one for the thumb. And then we become a second-hand team. A second-hand team. Right. All right. That's I like true. that thinking there. What are you going to do with the night? Uh, we're going to go to uh, my girlfriend's brother's house, and we're going to watch the big game. And will you all be wearing steel head hats? Or? Uh, no, just me. Uh, no one else has the courage to do it. I, I'm the only one. Well, you know, today is a day for courage, and I, I thank you for sharing with thank us. I appreciate really. it. All right. Go Steelers. As you can see, quite the crowd. I think some people are just at this point congregating. You got to get to that. All right. He has to go get some food. That's the latest here from Monroeville. I'm Gus Rosendale, Channel 4 Action News. Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly Fry, live in Pontiac, Michigan, right out the team. Over the fans have it absolutely unbelievable this week. We're going to take you inside. What do you see on the black and gold stuff coming up? Make sure you watch Super Bowl 40 on WAE Channel 4. Go Chiefs. All right, hey everybody, we're live here in Pontiac, Michigan, and I just want you to take a look inside this little SUV. Come on by, guys. Come on by. You may happen to recognize this dealer. We just took a look uh, behind us, and I said, hey, you know who that looks like? That looks like Chemo. I think we're going to turn the SUV around. Come on by, guys. Come on by. Hey, Chemo. I know we're not supposed to do interviews, but just say hi to Pittsburgh for us. <laughs> there you go. He's, he's hanging loose. He just gave us the symbol. He's getting ready to uh, head back on down to Detroit and get ready for the game today. It just proves that you never know who you're going to see here when you're hanging out outside the team hotel. You just kind of have to look fast. And that's just one of the things, because Clown fans have been here all throughout the week at the team hotel packing into the lobby, hoping to get that autograph, carrying the footballs, the t-shirts, whatever they can get their hands on for one of these guys to come through and sign it. So let's, we're outside, but I want to take you inside the team hotel. Take a look. <laughs> Steeler Nation has officially taken over the Black and Gold's team hotel. Inside, the fans have reached a frenzy. They're camped out, waiting for players with dancing bears, on all things black and gold in between. We're season ticket holders, and we won the lottery. So you got so tickets we're here. Yep, and we're going. And Are we're you going. excited? Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so nervous, but I'm so excited too. It's going to be great. And it's going to say, "Red Lights Outside, we found Steeler Reds dancing in the parking lot. We left at 2 a.m. You left at 2 a.m., yes, and we've been driving. We couldn't sleep, so we just <laughs> decided we're going to get up, we're going to leave now, and, and, and just get there and, and enjoy every minute of the oh, mayor. I didn't see Coach Carr yet, but, you know, in case he needs any tips, I'll be, I'll be ready. But right. I think he's doing very well without me. <laughs> but when it came to truly talking football, we had to find this man. I want to see Troy Pomal with a pick, run it, play pass, you know. Uh, I say Joe Porter's gonna knock uh, John Alexander down, get the fumble. He's gonna run all the way and score for the Pittsburgh. Here we go, Steelers! Here we go! <laughs> Give a little what's going on inside, but I love that little guy because I think he talks football better than all the rest of us. He's got the game already planned out, you two. <laughs> uh, Kelly, nice job, and Scott's right. You know, you better keep your eyes peeled because you said the family is staying in the hotel now that the guys have switched to a different one, wow. but they'll probably be jetting out there to stay. Right. I didn't realize they were going to be back here so soon, though, today, but I guess the coach has given them a little bit of leeway. So, and especially if you see anybody over my shoulder, let me know. <laughs> all right, we got you covered. <laughs> okay. See you, Kel. That's great, Kimo Van Olhoffen, given the, uh, you know, he's, he's a... Uh, he's a uh, loose. Never played football until he was 21 years oh. old. 
You know what? Wow. And you never talk to me because you've got that stupid computer up. This no, is really fun. I'm I thought we had a chance to. I'm finding out information. I'm checking the Detroit media. I'm checking the Seattle trash talk. I'm checking the. You've you know, got the webcam on. Yeah, that's me. I'll see what we can find. Yeah, I was gonna. We're gonna try to hook up maybe Ava Baker uh, later Aww. in her little tiny uh, Paula Mala jersey. Proud, yeah. proud daddy there. All right, we'll see. Way to go. All right, let's talk weather. And if you're heading out today, you look at the camera shake. We've been talking about this all morning. Uh, the biggest problem today, the wind. We'll see some snow getting off and throughout the day. But the wind today, that's going to be the problem for you. Uh, as it gusts up around 40 miles an hour. Live look on the old action cam. Cloudy skies, you can see for four miles. We're at 28 degrees right now. Winds are out of the west-southwest. 15 gusting near 30 miles an hour. Humidity safe. We have numbers from around the region. Franklin, you're at 27, 28 this hour in Butler International, West Mifflin, Steeler, Washington, 28, 28 Morgantown, 30 in Latrobe, 28 degrees in Indiana. Factor those winds in out there today, and it feels to be digital digits wind chills. Live Doppler weather radar. We'll head north first, looking into Venango and Clarion counties, where a little bit of light snow southeast of Franklin running into Clarion and down into Butler, and even into Armstrong County, central Armstrong County, with a moderate pocket of snow there. We'll work our way down the mountains into Indiana, or in into Blairsville, and on back through the Route 22 corridor, some moderate snow falling right along the mountaintops. That is going to be a problem for you, especially when you get over on Crescent Ridge in Cambria County with the wind and the snow. Could see whiteout conditions over there, so be prepared for that. Satellite radar from around the region. The low pressure that brought us from yesterday is pulling to the north. We're on the bottom side of it. It's wrapping this cold air around, keeping the snowflakes on us. They're going to be with us throughout the day. Forecast today looks like this. Mercer 2631 in Butler, 30 in Catanning. 31 in Aliquippa, cloudy skies with some snow showers, breezy conditions as well. Into the mountains, Indiana, you'll hit 31 for a high today. 33 in Uniontown, Oakland, 25 degrees, cloudy skies, some snow showers, breezy conditions, winds gusting to 40 miles an hour. Pittsburgh will hit 32, 30 your high in Washington, Steeler, 34 in Waynesburg, 35 in Morgantown, snow. Now, how much are we talking about? Same amount we've been talking about since yesterday, about an inch, maybe two inches as you get north and east in this white area. To the south and west, less than an inch of snow. It's going to be hard to measure it. That wind's going to keep the atmosphere stirred up and keep the, the snow blowing throughout the day. But if your travel to get to north, six inches now up by the lake. For the rest of today, if you're heading to a Super Bowl party this afternoon, 28 degrees, cloudy skies, windy conditions late afternoon, and the snow continues to fall through the overnight, 22 degrees, breezy, colder, wind chills into the single digits through the overnight, scattered snow showers as well. As we head into tomorrow, 30 degrees, a mixture of clouds and sunshine, a few flurries to deal with on your Monday for all the victory parties, hopefully, and a look at your weather watch for five-day forecast, we continue to see the temperatures holding in the 30s. Tuesday, flurries, 31. Wednesday, 34. Late Thursday, 34 degrees. Next weekend, another big party going on. That's Winterfest at Seven Springs. It looks like we'll actually have some wintry conditions for all the folks headed out to that. Wendy and Scott. All right, like the sound of it, indeed. Thank you so much for joining us here on Channel 4, our coverage of Super Bowl 40, both in Michigan and, and Spurs. We've got to cover the factors is we've talked about the impact of the weather and the roads and all of that for everybody headed to Michigan. But there's going to be some changes here. We already know what happened after the, uh, after the championship game, and they had to shut off a couple of roads and a couple of bridges. So we asked uh, Matt to come and get what to expect around town tonight. As Steeler fans gathered for this rally, the city finalized police plans for Super Bowl Sunday night after 9 p.m. We're going to have a high police presence uh, so that everybody has a good time. And everybody's on the south side, cars shut down completely from 10th to Hot Metal and shut down inbound from Beck's Run. The Hot Metal and Birmingham bridges will also close. We're going to get on to south side and party with the rest of the crazy idiots. We're going to be back up to the siren and 25 terrible towels. These pit news photos show the trouble in Oakland after the AFC championship. Police also have plans for that neighborhood. In Oakland, Forbes will shut down from McKee to Bigelow. So will all side streets leading to Forbes, plus Bay Boulevard the Allies. Oakland exits from the Parkway may also close to deal with people who want to party in the streets. No way. <laughs> Why wouldn't you be out on the street? Too cold out there and it's much more fun in a house. In the Strip District, Penn will shut down 21st to 16th. Smallman will shut down outbound from 15th to 21st, creating a pedestrian zone. This city loves the Steelers. And it's not my love. Everybody will be blending. You see black, white, everybody here, poor, rich, we'll all down. Pay sections plus 5th westbound from Grant will close, forming a perimeter keeping cars from the core of town where pedestrians may be partying. 
Well, I believe uh, Pittsburghers, we're going to be winners on and off the field, so we look for an acceleration after. Hey, I'm Jennifer Mealy, live at the Vermani Brothers in Greensburg. We've got pretty girls, we've got great food, lots of beer, and some crazy fans. That story is coming up. I'm Ron Hank for the you watch Super Bowl 40 on WTAE Channel 4. Detroit, Michigan, we're looking live outside of the uh, Pontiac uh, location uh, where we just a few minutes ago, if you're just joining us, we saw Kimo Hoffman driving by live. Now, you thought the team had switched to the uh, other mysterious hotel, but a lot of them have family members out here, and we got that glimpse, and uh, Kimo giving us the hang loose, and uh, he's getting ready for the game, which is now five hours, 20 Nine minutes to go. Uh, Jen Mealy uh, has been out. She's been uh, restaurant hopping. Uh, we had her in an Eaton Park, a Primanti's. Uh, are, are, you, are you looking and not touching, or are you sampling, Jen, as you go? Oh, please. You know me, Scott. I'm out sampling. Sample. But I do want to tell you, these are some great fans. We have a Heinz Ward lookalike, Triple Malo lookalike. We have a crazy Steeler fan. Check out this Terry Bradshaw lookalike. Very nice. Very nice. Now, I found some girls here in the crowd who actually have something for me. Girls, I hear you have something for me. Yes, actually, we have this shirt for you the other day. So, here's iron-ons, yeah. Iron so, let me see the front. Let me see the front. I love the Steelers. Oh, that is so nice. That is so nice. I really appreciate that. I'll be wearing that during the next check-in here. We're going to get some food. We have Pervani sandwiches, lots of pizza. A great time back there. We're having a great time here. We're live in Greensburg. I'm Jennifer Mealy, Channel 4 Action News. This is Pittsburgh or Bob Hart. This is the Seattle Red Coats. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. I'm Warville Smith with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Watch Super Bowl 40 on WTAE Channel 4. This is WTAE Channel 4 Pittsburgh. Your official Steelers Super Bowl station. Channel 1 News Special Destined in Detroit continues. Detroit, Michigan, Ford Field. I was checking one of the Detroit newspapers and the columnist there saying uh, this is a comeback city with two comeback teams that have come to this place. Uh, Workmen-like teams, not flashy, all get it done, both the best in their conferences, and it will all come down to a head tonight. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of Super Bowl 40. I'm Scott Baker here with our Channel 4 Action News team spread far and wide across Steeler Nation, including our team in Michigan. Mike and Sally are joining us now. They have a couple of special guests. Uh, this is going to be civil, right, this uh, discourse? That's right. You know, to talk about comeback cities, Pittsburgh certainly one of those. And here is his mayor with the mayor of Seattle. And you guys have been making the rounds. You've been on national television this morning already. Good morning, America. Good morning. Good morning. We met at 536 this morning. It's been a, a great day and a great weekend for uh, the whole country, but especially Pittsburgh. I think there's more Pittsburghers in, in Detroit now than are in the uh, home. Oh. Well, I heard this is a new precinct or something here yeah. for Pittsburgh. Yeah, I declare Detroit a neighborhood. So all the Pittsburghers are having a heck of a good time. You know, there are a lot of Seattle fans here and there. Greg Nichols joins us now, and this is your opportunity not to be like Jeremy Stevens, not to trash talk. <laughs> you, you really like this. Were you born here? First six years of your life in Erie. In Erie, PA. Uh, we moved away about six months in uh, Seattle when I was about six years old, so went to kindergarten in Mrs. Withers' class in Grover Cleveland Elementary School. So, yeah. And you guys are both Democrats, so you get along, yeah. and it, there's no really hatred here, is there? Oh, no, this is great. It's great for both communities. I think it's a great matchup. We've got great history with uh, four Super wins. We're going to cap it at four. This is our first trip. And, and we're very excited. We're enjoying the moment. All right, gentlemen, refresh us on your friendly wager. Well, I'm having a taste of Pittsburgh, one of our famous tailgate parties, from Heinz ketchup to Venosis to the Manis and uh, pre donna salad dressing. So we have a list of 25 restaurants and still growing. So he's going to have a great tailgate party uh, if we... How about you, Mayor Nichols? Well, well, we've got some uh, great Washington wine, some Pike Place Market uh, microbrew, uh, Starbucks coffee, right. salmon, although I hope Sam's going to get some this time next week. I don't think so. I hope Bob O'Connor, <laughs> you invite Sally me. Hey, Mayor. Uh-oh, someone's going to... I plan on drinking a lot of Starbucks <laughs> coffee <laughs> on the mayor. I thought the mayor. <laughs> Making use of props. Thank you. You can support that to be with us. You can put some gloves coats on, gracious. All right. Go Steelers. Absolutely. Go Hawks. All right. And All I right. think now we're going to toss it over to John and Andrew. That's a good prop for you. Starbucks out of cars. All right, you know what? 
Back here. 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 Back uh, go around and see. I have some relatives here, and we're really having a good time. Uh, there's and we're doing the You the Super Bowl 10 years ago with your son, is that yes. right? Yes, I've been to every Super Bowl uh, for the Steelers, and the first one, actually, I drove to New Orleans straight through 24 hours to see him play. <laughs> How does this stack up? Oh, this is a hundred times bigger. It's just it's bigger than the event. You see, every uh, the whole country, especially our our town. You you know you could probably rob a bank and you wouldn't be on the news. It's all Steelers and Super Bowl, so it's <laughs> it's probably hey, great. Quick, quick question: First time the Seahawks uh, have made it. Yeah. Is your first Super Bowl experience? It is and my first experience in Detroit. So we're going to Greek Town, a nice warm spot for lunch, uh, and looking forward to the game very much. Great. We well, appreciate you guys being on. You bet. Thanks very much. Right, thanks now we're going to throw it over to John and Andrew. Guys? Thanks, thanks guys. Pre-game political analysis only on Channel 4. Yeah, you know, and uh, Mayor O'Connor, he, he's trying to break the cold. You can tell he's a little chilly, but uh, he's talking it out. So it's always fun when the, the mayors of the two cities uh, make that little Super Bowl bet. So we'll see who wins. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit of that Starbucks coffee. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know. I'm on adrenaline, but I could use a little pick-me-up. Now, JB, you and I were talking briefly before we went on about uh, this almost being a home game for the Steelers. It hasn't happened much in Super Bowl history. Super Bowl 19, uh, the 49ers and the Dolphins, that game was played at Stanford Stadium, clearly a home field advantage right, right. for the 49ers. Right. What about today? I mean, how big a home field edge do you think the Steelers could have taking on the, uh, the Seahawks this afternoon here at Ford Field? Uh, you know, I was going to ask them, too, at you know, the end of this. I'm walking the street. Oh, we, we can hear them kind of hit or miss, the pixelating. Right. I was going to ask them a little bit later. Oh, do, do we have you guys yet? Can you hear us? We put a couple quarters in the uh, machine, and now we've got them back on. Almost had them. Now, see, I think we're getting the uh, live. The, uh, actually, okay, you know what, Wendy? I would say we've been remarkably problem-free, technically yeah. speaking, here. Yeah. So the, uh, and we didn't really want to jinx it, so yeah, we're just... No, no. Well, you know, we're it's like you know, you're at home, you're watching this, and uh, I'm sure occasionally your your VCR flashes 12, 12, 12, and this is our equivalent every now and then. You know, what I was going to ask them was, I, are they taking this too casually? The team, team them right. up? I, I'm just a little edgy, you know. I have to be honest with you. I'm kind of right on the edge, and, and I'm worried that all this stuff, all the hoopla and whatnot, is kind of it's kind of freaking me out. Now you got John and Andrew there. What do you guys think? I mean, do you think all this stuff is going to drain the Steelers? Or are they going to be fresh and ready to go? You know, uh, Wendy, they've had two weeks to get ready for this thing, and uh, even despite all the hoopla concerning Jerome Bettis, all the national attention, uh, JB, I don't think the Steelers are going to be on edge at all. I mean, they've been very relaxed all week. We've seen them during practice. They're at the point now where it's like, look, let's stop talking. Let's just go ahead and play. I mean, they can play this game last week. No question the Steelers win. But the two weeks, I think they're rested, they're ready. I can't see them going overboard in this one. Yeah, I think the two weeks yeah. was was actually very beneficial because uh, you know you get some guy back healthy. We mentioned James Harrison. Yeah. Last time we were on some of these other key players that they're getting healthy and. Um, they're on such a roll right now, and they're so focused, and they're a loose, confident football team. I don't think the layoff's going to do them any good. It's, it's going to make them, I think, even more prepared for this football game. I tell you, I am supremely confident in the Steelers team, and I haven't been in the playoffs. I mean, I'm one of the guys who thought the Colts were not the Steelers out of the playoffs. Yeah, so did I, and I, I, I got yeah. chastised by the uh, greater <laughs> Pittsburgh area for it, and well-deserved. Well, but I, I look at this team now, and they seem to find a way to beat every team they play in a very creative fashion. A lot of us are the coordinators. Ken Wood, me up creative offensive game plan week after week. Dick LeBeau with a very challenging defensive game plan. The Steelers are always ready, no matter who they play these last seven games. Well, and you talk about the coordinators, Andrew, and that's a great point, but to that effect, how much trust Coach Howard has in Dick LeBeau and Ken Wisenhunt to uh, design the game plan and have the players go out and execute it. I think Cower this is obviously you got the Super Bowl. It's a good yeah, coaching yeah. job, but it's his best coaching job. I think he's taking kind of a Joe Paterno type attitude where it's like, look, Raiders, I've got solid veteran players that can police the locker room. All I have to do is manage what goes on. Don't mess it up. Yeah, I think Bill Cower, the key this year is Cower has been more relaxed, has delegated a little bit, doesn't micromanage nearly as much. And so, Wendy, as we send it back to you, relax, don't worry. We've got taken care of here at Ford Field. Steelers are going to win this game. I think they win by two touchdowns. Got it.
Thank you very much. I feel much better. Now, if I could only watch it somewhere other than where my husband is, I'll feel right. so much better than that. But you're, oh. but you're right to, to be, it's everybody needs to expect the Seahawks to come in here with real intensity. Tun Chilkin was saying that in his uh, blog on the uh, Tribune Review site, that uh, if they don't get out of the gate really intense, they're going to have a tough time. But their coach, they, they've been saying to them, you know, we like being the underdogs. And so they're ready to try and come out. I like little, but, being the underdog. Yeah. Okay. I normally, but I, and I think that when they, they get in there, the Steelers are going to meet them slug for slug, and it's going to work out. We've also been talking to Sheldon Ingram all throughout the morning. And, Sheldon, we, I can't help but notice that we, we go back to these live shots of Ford Field. There, there's just not anybody around. Now, are they really keeping everybody away? Nobody's allowed to get in there? Or how, how does it work out? Oh, he can't hear uh, us. Sheldon, can you hear us? He just ignore oh, yeah, us. Yeah, he can yeah, actually I hear you, hear you now. He's not I interested you. in what yeah, we're saying. Yeah. Okay, so what's that question again? I was just asking you, we haven't seen many people milling about there. What, what kind of perimeter are they keeping? Are they living for out? Well, yeah, the, you know, the, the security around here is very tight. And regarding the hotel situation, uh, at least where we're staying at the NFL headquarters hotel, they have several streets blocked off, and we couldn't even park our own vehicle at our hotel. We had to park the flock site and then be shuttled in. As far as around here at the stadium, we see some uh, media folk uh, getting ready to head into Ford Field right now. And the... Uh, the process here is that we also have to uh, park a few blocks away. We have to walk along the line and, uh, and then snake our way into the uh, stadium. And some of those folks are doing that right now. All right, Sheldon. And you know what? We're going to be checking back in with you in just a moment. We're kind of doing our, our round robin going through all these people. So you hang tight there. Try to get warm a little bit. We'll take a all quick right. break and we're going to see you back in just about two minutes. Keep it here. Our Action News uh, coverage continues. It has uh, been uh, in-depth. It has been serious. It has also <laughs> been entirely frivolous at times yeah. as we did our extreme set makeover here. <laughs> this is simply my attempt to match uh, whatever again is going on okay. at the Weather Center. Perfect. We, got more, we have more Steelers bling around here. You never know. All right. We're going to be back in just a couple minutes. Keep it here. Stay with us. Anytime you're talking about the Steelers, it's serious, even if it's frivolous stuff. I'm Kelly Fry live in Pontiac, Michigan, where we're still on Steeler Player Watch today. We saw Chemo just a few moments ago. Who else is stopping by the hotel? Well, stick around. It's coming up. Scott's kneeling down. It always kind of freaks me out. I never know what he's going to do. Yeah. Scott's eating a sandwich over here, right. so pardon we us. Enough of Gus in the store for seven hours and <laughs> Jen in the restaurants. We, we sent out for some wraps and some stuff. And, you know, what, Schwenick, or, uh, this morning, he wanted to deliver it to the station. I got so, some. There you so go. So what are you bringing back, Gus? What Come are you bringing on. back to the station? I, I don't know. You don't, you don't beat the star power of Don Schwenick or whatever he gets, he wants. That's the bottom line. You know, I'll tell you what a lot of people want around here, and it's these I'm for the Steelers signs. We actually ago ran out of them and we brought a whole box full so one of our, our intern Warren ran back to the back hit people who down from me to get these signs uh, a couple of fellows from Ohio came by and we didn't have them I was all nervous but this is the hot thing to have and I'm talking to Lydia you got yours uh -huh. you get rid of the big game tonight yeah what are you gonna be doing for that um we're having a party at my house my grandmother's coming well that, can I come <laughs> yeah well uh, uh, I think that's a no actually <laughs> uh you know tell me what are your predictions for the game um I think we're going to win. By how much? Have you thought about that? No, I think it's, but I think it might be a close game. Now, you're how old? Nine. Nine years old? Uh-huh. You're going to stay up for the whole game? Uh-huh. You got special permission for that? Uh-huh. You're going to be a little tired for school tomorrow? Probably. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. How long have you been football for? Um, as long as I can remember. That's probably for most people around here. Everybody, show up your signs. Go Steelers! Yeah. The hot commodity, we still got a few of them to go, but again, they're flying fast. Everybody, obviously, for the Steelers here in Monroeville. Reporting live, I'm Sir Rodney Dale, for Andrews. I'm John Greiner, live in the strip. We continue to have people come in from other states just to be in Pittsburgh today. More from the strip district coming up. Hi, I'm Max Starr, Steelers, Major U.S. Super Bowl 40 on WTAE, Channel 4. Presents today's special coverage, Destination Detroit. Yeah, we are back, counting down to the big kickoff. Hey, Kelly Fry, apparently you've done the undoable, the unthinkable. She found Seahawks Mission fans. Mission impossible yes. there in Detroit, yeah. I, I, I was going to surprise you with that, Wendy, because I can't believe that this has happened, but I had two gentlemen come up behind me, and then when we turned over, they're standing right beside me. They started to slowly unzip their jackets, show this to everybody back in Pittsburgh. 
Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. They, they've got to be so quiet because they're afraid for themselves here at this A little outnumbered. I, well, you are. Now, what, why are you doing this? You came into enemy territory. Well, just trying to help the team. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Now, now, you said you actually have tickets, so you're going there, but you've got a problem with where your seats are. Well, we're going to be amongst uh, Steve fans in the dealer end zone. Don't tell them where we're going to be. <laughs> oh, sorry. Good one. <laughs> yes. Please tell your, tell your fans, uh, tell the Steeler fans if they've got tickets there to look for these two guys. Very brave souls to come out here today. Yes. Well, we're huge yeah. fans. Yeah. Go on. Oh, oh, we got to go. Oh, we got to right, go now. I think they're going to be running <laughs> yeah. off. Have okay. you had a good time, though, this week? The uh, black and gold fans fantastic. have treated you okay? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The Steeler fans have been great. Yeah. Okay. They have been. Well, and we hope we that continues through the game. <laughs> exactly. Because it's going to be pretty bleak by the fourth quarter. You know what? I think that's just about enough out of you. Get one last shot. You want to get one last shot and then show your shirt? Because that's the only time we've seen them, unfortunately, because you're outnumbered this week. Outnumbered. Well, that's okay. Only in the stands. Oh, you guys, get out of here. Hey, thanks for being for that. We had some fun. They said, though, that they, they have to take some good pictures of themselves. They're afraid that they may not look quite the same after the game is done with all the black and gold fans that are here. But everybody's been very kind to them. I can't believe they came here to the steam hell. Just say you. You know what, Kelly? Something I've noticed, though, as with all your reports, the fans, even with our folks here in Pittsburgh, all the fans around us, they're so nice and they're so, I, I don't know, they're respectful. You know what I mean? Yeah, my might be who were calm because they came sneaking up behind me like this, going shh. <laughs> so I think they had to keep it down or else they were going to be in trouble here. <laughs> Up there, we yeah. uh, we appreciate all that. She's been doing such a great job. Oh, this is enough of you. I like that. She's where, where to put it. I'm a little worried when Gus said that people were getting avocados to make guac guacamole, and I'm saying, oh, I think you need to like get. I have five no, 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 that's good, but oh. it's green, so we need to like put some food coloring in it. Make it. Oh, different. for the love. Oh my God. Well, like, you know, let's talk to John Griner now. We haven't seen the district in a while. Let's okay, hey, John, how Hud are you? Huddling like the penguins, he said. Yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, it's uh, quite a festive atmosphere on a Sunday, which normally, you know, every place in the Strip is closed down. I have a nice story to tell you. Sandra Prouse is here with her family. Fourteen people came up from Alexandria, Virginia. This is a long-time tradition, right? Long-time tradition. I brought my children up with all the four on the Super Bowl, and now they're bringing their children. These are all my grandchildren, my sister, and we come up every year. And we've been waiting all that years for the time to. I understand your mom's watching. My mom's watching. I hope on a sofa. Grandma Capazzoli, we're here for you, baby. Okay. Not only, not only are they coming from. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Not only are they coming from Virginia. Take a look at Chuck here. Chuck came from Syracuse, New York. He's originally from Monroeville. But I think what takes the cake are these guys right here. These guys came from Nova Scotia just to be in Pittsburgh for the Super Bowl. So I thought Canada was a, was a place for hockey. Not anymore. Not today. Not today. We throw it out the window today. Yeah. All right, folks. All right, what do you have to say? Well, as you can see, things are not quieting down. District, which is great. Reporting live, John Griner, Channel 4 Action. You know, we got the same spirit in here. We do. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Oh, I love nice it. to see that. This day. is great stuff. You know what? And it's an amazing day. It's really nothing like this has happened in 10 years. Uh -uh. And, and you talk, everybody is excited. Every shot we go to, everybody's happy, excited. No, I've, I've done opposition research. I just looked up uh, Seahawk. I mean, nobody could tell me what it is. Right. It's an osprey. Okay. We're, we're playing the hunt? Seattle Ospreys. Yeah, it hunts. They also call them fish hawks. They, they die yeah. out. They have closable nostrils to keep the water out. That's there fascinating you go. stuff, Scott. Great. You, go. <clears throat> you got a bird, you got a big old burly guy. Yeah. I'd like to see the big old burly It's not guy much of a matchup. All right. Well, you know what? They're dealing with wintry, steeler type weather in Detroit. We're dealing with it around here. And as you head out, you're going to continue to see some cold wind. We're going to talk about that wind coming up in just a moment. I will look on the action again as we're looking into uh, the Parkway East. Is a and right there where it joins uh, the Forest Hills and Route 30. Cloudy skies, you can see for two miles. And then there's no fly out. It's international west-southwest wind at 17. But notice now gusts registering at 30. And we've actually had one at 34 miles an hour here at the studios. And you're going to see that wind staying gusty all day long. Numbers from around the area. Franklin checks in with 27, 28 in Butler. West Mifflin, Big and Latrobe, Indiana, 25 Johnstown. Morgantown at 30 degrees. Factor the winds in, though. That really tells the story. It's 11 right now in Franklin. Dubois has dipped to the single digits. 9, 13 in Indiana, 16 in Windchill and Latrobe, 12 in West Mifflin, 13 in Slur, Washington, 17 in Oregon.
Live pinpoint Doppler weather radar currently zoomed in. Morgantown, a couple of flurries. Flurries to light snow, but as you get in the mountains east of Fayette County, that's when you're seeing some moderate bursts of snowfall. We'll zoom it out a bit, you see this band of snow running right through the mountains. Light snow through Clarion County, just getting ready to work through Allegheny County. We'll move up north next where Franklin to Clarion to Butler. We've got these pockets of snowflakes. We're going to see that throughout the day. The low continues to pull to the north. In its wake, it's pulling the snow across us, and we will snow on on this Super Bowl. Thanks, Ryan Mercer, Newcastle, make 29. 30 in Catanning, cloudy skies, breezy, winds gusting to 40 miles an hour. Indiana, you'll hit 31, 33 in Uniontown, 25 in Oakland. Pittsburgh today makes 32 for the Super Bowl Sunday, 34 in Waynesburg, 35 in Morgantown. The time show is done through tonight into tomorrow, just an inch or so across the region, maybe one to two inches as you get north of the city. And then up around the lake, they could pick up four to six. If you're heading to a Super Bowl party this afternoon, <coughs> excuse me. Getting all choked up for the game. 28 degrees, cloud guys, windy, scattered snow showers through the overnight. 22, breezy, colder, wind chills down into the single digits overnight. Tomorrow, 30 degrees with a mixture of clouds and sunshine. A few flurries as well. Look at your five day forecast. And we continue to see temperatures holding around the mark. 31 degrees on Tuesday with some snowflakes possible. Wednesday, 34 degrees, chance of some snowflakes. And on your Thursday, 34 degrees. And she has some stuff like she has to get your lunch in. Oh, well, you know what? I have it. Well, see, what are, what are, what are, the, you folks know what is the time? Well, I'm on. They can get a bathroom break with lunch in. <laughs> So. All kinds of stuff. I've been, I've been trying to write blogs for the website. Wow. We've been all kinds of stuff. Yep. Very busy. Multitasking. Oh, it's you. fun. Yes, we are. Thank sure. you. All right. I'm really sure what we're going to do. Hey, I'm Jennifer Mealy, and I am live here for Manny Brothers. I'm about to take a bite of a big sandwich, so my husband's holding the microphone for me. Coming up next, we're going to have Steeler trivia and lots of fun with friends. Woo! Look at this. Yeah. Beautiful Pontiac stuff. Michigan. Beautiful stuff going on. I was standing in this shot for us for a while. She's monitoring the ins and the outs of this hotel where the Steelers' families and friends are staying. Even caught a glimpse of Kimo Van Olhoffen. But what she doesn't know is that history is being made right here, right now, on this set at Chef War Action. You've got Baker doing amazing things on this computer. The things that I've seen you do in the last hour. You're writing Later, songs. I think we're going to try to get Ava Baker on live on the computer with her little Palomalo shirt. Well, I hope so. But right so. now we have live. Because, you know, like our I love that satellite shot, we know. Oh, okay. oh, so it's like not up to the satellite. It's going over the air direct to our, her live truck. Jen Mealy is, uh, has been restaurant hopping, and it's getting increasingly loud in these restaurants, I think, Jen. Hey yes, guys, it has been. I just lost my earpiece here because it's a lot, but it's fabulous. What's going on? We've got Steeler Trivia very quickly for you. What's your name? Gator. All right, and what's your name? Barry. All right, guys, here's the first question What's a Steeler player whose last name is the part of a body? Lambert. Lambert. No, but you. The answer is foot. What college did Jerome Bettis play for? Oh, very good. All right, one more question, okay? What Steeler is currently starring in an ESPN commercial as a fire rescue volunteer? Is it Merrill Hodge? No. Oh, all right, Ben Roethlisberger is the answer. But just for you, but, but just because you guys were sports, grab some of that sandwich. I'm going to grab some of mine. This is what you win, a big Primanti sandwich. Come on, grab some. Let's eat it. Hey, can I get a Go Steelers here? Hey, we're live in Greensburg, Westmoreland County. I'm Jennifer Mealy, and I'm getting full here. That story and more. From Greensburg, coming up. I'm Andrew Stocky live at Ford Field, site of Super Bowl 40. Coming up next, you're going to find out how Big Ben has matured into a big time quarterback here on your Super Bowl station, Channel 4. I'm Darren Perry with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Make sure to watch Super Bowl on Channel 4. And today's special coverage Destination Detroit. This is WTAE Channel 4 Pittsburgh, your official Steelers Super Bowl station. Channel 4 Action News Special Report, Destination Detroit, continues. The unthinkable season, the one they thought was written off, the Pittsburgh Steelers. It looked like the road would be too rough, but then they resurrected themselves. They had to win out, and here they are, four hours, 55 minutes away from kickoff. It has now become epic in Detroit, Michigan. 
Gosh, I was just going to say, hey, welcome back to the show, everybody. Hey, welcome back to the show. There you go. Now, go ahead. You're doing so well. I, well, I we've been trading off. You say, who, you know, you feel? I got plenty of stuff to say. I could go, go, I could go straight through to 6 o'clock. Shocking that you yeah. could do that. You know, nobody knows you better than the people with whom we work so intimately. <laughs> Sheldon, Mike, and Sally out at Ford Field again. I wish you guys were here because you're, you're missing all of the extravaganza going on in this city. It's incredible to be on the stand, guys. Every time we uh, go to a live shot in Pittsburgh, uh, when, he, when we hear the crowd just screaming, here we go, and what, we're, we're so far away from kickoff, it kind of gives us kind of chills here, well, we don't need any more chills. Uh, it does, it's going to pump us back, so it's great to hear that back in Pittsburgh. But you know, if there's a current theme, uh, Sally, during this whole week, it's, cold. It's, it's really cold, <laughs> but it's, it's, always, it's also the MVPs that are here. All the MVPs for the Super Bowl, they talk about the maturity of Roethlisberger. It's easy to forget that this guy five years is a teenager. Well, you know, one of the interesting things about this game uh, is Hasselback, the quarterback for the Seahawks, because he won that game by himself against the Redskins. Mm -hmm. Excellent scrambling ability. And then you look at the performance by Ben Roethlisberger last, in the last game against Denver. Phenomenal uh, throwing skills with his playing that game, so it's going to be really interesting between the two. Well, you know, you really made an impact on the game, though, when the legends start talking about you making history. And then one of the biggest fans of Ben Roethlisberger is very much a son at Rio Row and, and asked about Ben. He called him a Brady. He called him poised and, and selfless. And, and then when, when I asked Ben about this, uh, uh, he was visibly very pleased. He's making history, and the legends of the game praise him and call him. Legends like Dan Marino. I don't want to pinch myself yet, because if I'm dreaming, I'm going to keep going. Uh, but, you know, I do. I, I talked to Danny me the other day. Uh, again, it's talking more. It's uh, it truly really almost too good to be true. And Gary Bradshaw calls Ben Poy, selfless, the real deal. And the MVP there, he scoffed at a comparison between him and Ben. Big arm. Big arm. That's kind of it. That's where it stops. He's, <laughs> I, don't, I can't compare myself with him. I, 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 a second year guy. Doing what he's done this year on the road in these playoff games, I, you know, I, we're, we were, we're big. I was a big guy coming out and said, uh, uh, but we both have big arms. And outside of that, I think it kind of stops right there. It's, a, it's an honor coming from uh, from Terry. You know, being a, a wonderful quarterback, winning uh, four Super Bowls that he won, and, and you know, I'm I'm trying to flip big just you know, he, he he set the standard over there, and a lot of people are trying to compare, but. Uh, I don't see any comparison. He's he set the ball really high, and, and I'm just trying to reach it. And remember, he is the second youngest quarterback to start Super Bowl. The youngest was another spur, Dan Marino. It is amazing how the city of Pittsburgh is connected to the famous quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah, that's the city, the region. Absolutely. And Ben all week was uh, really pleased when he answered the questions that Coach Cowher has given him the keys to the offense to, to be able to throw the ball so early in the game. Let's throw it over to John Burton and Andrew Stockey with more on today's Super Bowl. Guys? Thank you much, Mike, Sally, Sheldon. You know, JB, I really appreciate Ben Roethlisberger. I didn't get to hear some of the people outside of it that talk about him. The one thing about Roethlisberger we heard all week long from all the national guys, and there are a lot of them here of this 3,400 plus media contingent, is how mature he is, how he plays well beyond his years. Yeah, he knows himself very well. I'm most pleased about is to hear Terry Bradshaw say such nice things about him. Remember when we caught up to him early in the spring? Yeah. And he told Ben, park the motorcycle! Park it! Remember that? That was one of the funniest, uh, yeah. you know, and Brad's funny. That's one of the funniest reviews we've done in a long time. But, yeah, I mean, hey, listen, Ben Roth is from a burger. He, you know, he carries the mail for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Some people can't seem to get enough of this guy. And uh, we know why. The guy's got great skills. Now, you talked to a guy earlier this week who has watched the Steelers from afar at the same time, has a real Pittsburgh perspective on the black and gold. That's right. Uh, you know, one of the all-time greats, member of the NFL's uh, 75th uh, anniversary all-NFL team. Rod Woodson, the great Steeler cornerback, uh, played in the last Super Bowl uh, that the Steelers were in, the Los Cowboys, 10 years ago. Caught up with him uh, on Radio Row earlier this week to get his thoughts on not only the Steelers, but uh, his new career in broadcasting. Check it out. Rod, how about this Pittsburgh Steeler team? Obviously, an outstanding defense. Uh, good off for Dream and Jerome for off the start. What do you about this uh, Pittsburgh Steeler team? I, I think it's a uh, even team. You know, when I was in Pittsburgh, we had a uh, tremendous defense. Uh, offense was efficient, but not a high-scoring offense. Where now, you know, their offense are in the top five, top ten in the screen, which you know, that never was the case years ago. 
Uh, and I think that's an indication of uh, Ben coming in, uh, feeling comfortable more so this year than he did last year. I think Bill Cower, Ken Wisenhunt, and Ben Rosenberger, I think they all have more trust in the system and each other. And it's shown on the ball. So. Uh, I can't put you on the spot and ask for a prediction. I can't put you on the spot, but you can, you can take, you can read between the lines, I think they have a very, 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 very good shot, very good shot to win. A very, very, <laughs> very good chance to win. Read between the lines, folks. I think uh, old number 26 is picking the black and gold today. Yeah, but he's not committing, though. No, but come on. Come on, make the commitment, just like you did during the Just be like Merrill Hodge. Just be, just, just be out, out with it. You know, Merrill Hodge never roots against the Steelers. So you, you know in Rod Woodson's heart he cannot pick against the Pittsburgh Steelers today. Well, I know another guy who cannot pick against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's Sheldon Ingram. He joins this live forward field as well. Okay, Sheldon. Thanks a lot, Andrew and JB. Another competition that's going on today are the Super Bowl commercials. And we'll hear all about them. We'll read all about them Monday morning in the USA Today as to who had the best and who had the absolute worst commercials during the Super Bowl. This week, I had a chance to get a sneak peek at one that will be featured tonight. It's a very different environment because it's almost an entertainment uh, opportunity for a lot of people even to watch the commercials more than the game. Kind of like General Manager Jim Taylor is giving you a sense of how much pressure is placed with their Super Bowl at the 2007 Escalade. General Motors is taking a big hit financially but still finds it necessary to market the Cadillac luxury SUV on a large scale. It is the most expensive commercial we create in the history effectively of our life. Uh, because of the amount of exposure it gets and the amount of eyes that are on it and the amount of impact that we can make in just 60 seconds. So what does this commercial look like? GM is using a fashion show theme in the Super Bowl ad. Everything from a 200-foot runway to suit models and high-profile figures from the fashion industry. We went to great lengths to make this an absolute authentic uh, fashion show by building a 200-foot runway, by hiring supermodels, by filling the audience with uh, the aficionados of the fashion business. So it has to be memorable, and it has to, to kind of break through all that run of commercials and uh, not be a typical car commercial. Now, you know I had to ask General Motors, how much are they paying for the Super Bowl ad? The answer? They would say, because it's not for my consumption. Back to you, the studio. You know, I think we're going to say that 30 seconds five going for two and a half million. Yeah. yeah. Something, yeah. Like Something like that. A lot, a lot of money. Oh, my God. Just see how far it goes for that 60 seconds. Yeah, we got 800 million people saying. A billion people are watching. Uh, the very first Super Bowl 40 years ago, they went for uh, $80,000. Is that right? And that yeah, was for, huge for, money. For, yeah, exactly. So if, if that one's a 60 seconder, is that a $5 million spot? It's got to be. Created, by the way, by Paul Van Osdell's brother. Oh, you know that. Actually, yeah. Neat stuff. Yes, our Team 4 investigation. <laughs> the making of the commercial will be forthcoming. Jim Parsons will be chasing him down. It'll That's be very right. Ugly. That's right. Hey, you know what? We're going to be live on this set here for another, oh gosh, just shy of an hour yeah, now. If you already emailed us and, and uh, having a great time, we appreciate the feedback and a lot more to come here on Channel 4 as our coverage of Super Bowl 40 continues. Day around. I'm going to tell you what's going on here. As everyone says, go Steelers! All right, we are back. You know, I was wondering how long it was going to take him to do this because if you've ever been on any Steelers Sunday to mm -hmm. any giant eagle or shop and save, whatever, Food the people behind the scenes, the workers, Gus, you know what I'm talking about. They're the ones who are the most decked out. They're crazy fans there. Sure, I mean, and that is something we've seen all morning long. I mean, this is a very conservative compared to some of the outs that we have seen and in the last couple hours. One of the great things, and Ellen and I were talking about this before Ellen lives in Monroe Hills, how everyone is sort of, in different ways, if they have moved to the area, discovered the Steelers. It, it's a force of nature around here. Now, Ellen, yes, it is. you moved to the area in yes. the States, kind of that huge stretch of Super Bowl. Winning. Yes, yes, I did. What was it like? You moved here from Germany. Right. What was it like coming from a foreign country to this foreign land and discovering this phenomenon? Oh, it was wonderful because we, we never got to see Steelers playing there that way. It's just a football over there. But when we came to the United States and we watched the Steelers playing, at first it wasn't such a big thing for us, but then later on we really started enjoying it. And then, you know, they won all the games and it, it really, we got into it with them. We bought a few games and it, 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 it put us in a good mood. It, it made us feel good. We, we knew they were from Pittsburgh and it, it really was a good thing to have. It's, it is a remarkable Remarkable unifying force for so yes, many people. Is. You can move here for and right. so you, take it into you, it. you take it into it because I feel like the Steelers are like family. 
you know, because they're so close with us. I mean, they talk to us on TV, maybe not in person, but, you know, part of it is like family because you, know, you go out, you see all the different things that you buy from the skills, you get to hear about the skills, you get to see them play, and it's a good feeling. I have to say, I think that's one of the best descriptions of Steeler Nation I, I have ever heard well, since coming you. here. <laughs> and after 30 years, your love for them has, I imagine, just grown. It's never going to change. And I mean, I'm always hooray every time I hear their name. And I know it, it, when they're playing, i got to be in front of that TV, and i got to watch them, and they got to win. They must win every time. Go Steelers. Thank Ellen, you very much. Thanks for nice your time. You. Have a day. That's Bye. here in Monroeville. I'm Gus Rosendale. We'll send it back to you. I'm Kelly Fry, live in Pontiac, Michigan, right outside the Eagle Tower. All the families have been staying this week, and coming up, we're sitting down to talk with one of those families one-on-one. -on -one. Don't go anywhere. Wright Hummer presents today's special coverage, Destination Detroit. Welcome back. Scott Baker, we here at Channel 4 Action News, continuing Whoa, super extreme close-up there on John's mouth. Wow. And uh, we've had uh, a wild time here as we've uh, gone around from Michigan to, the, to Greensburg to down to the Strip District, where a while ago John was huddling with people like Penguin. Now he seems to have uh, established a secure presence for himself. John. Well, we probably will draw a crowd. You know, I told you about the folks who came from Nova Scotia. I got that beat. Meet Omar and Talia. Omar, you came to Pittsburgh from where? Mexico City. It seems all the Steelers. I'm a Steeler fan since '79. Now you've never seen snow before, right? Never, never. This is for me is like vacation. This is Christmas for me. You know? <laughs> How do you like the city? Uh, I think it's beautiful. Uh, everybody's very lovely people and we love to see the Steelers here and celebrate the world champions. Now the Steelers played in Mexico City, right? In 2000, right? and I meet with Mr. Rooney, I say, Mr. Rooney, tomorrow you'll see 90,000 fans. This is a uh, for Noah Cobalt Curry, okay? And they basically with the Steelers fans, good Steelers in Mexico City. So are you also a Steelers fan? Yes, I am. But she's a bigger fan. Okay. Oh, there you go, she's a big fan then. Oh, Scott, as I said, we're a draw crowd, and here they are. All the way from Mexico City. We're not sliding the local folks because they're down here too. I can't tell you how many folks came up to me and said, hey, we saw that you were on today, so we decided to come to this time. You know, signs, uh, we're for the Steelers. Everybody's asking me for those. Sorry, folks, don't come and ask me because I've run out of them. Go see Wendy and Scott at the station. Reporting live from the Strip, John Greiner, Channel 4 Action News. <laughs> There's a huge Spanish-speaking nation. They, uh, right. The Steeler na nation goes, i got to play this. Let's see if it works. Oh, good. That really worked out extremely well. There it goes. It's a ringtone. Nice. Matt, our stage guy, who is working on his own, and he got it. It's not one you can download. He had it, like, emailed somehow or something. But My kids are really getting into this. I'm noticing it more and more that, uh, you know, four years old, five, six, they're really getting into this. And they used to be diehard Penguins fans. They saw that. Getting into the, the Steeler Nation. It has a power. You can't resist it. Do not <laughs> it pulls you. touch what? my hand <laughs> <laughs> right now. All right. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. Let's talk weather, and we've got some snow flying. You just heard the jump meeting go for the first time. You know what? The good news is uh, we're not going to see a lot of it. If he wants to go see it accumulate somewhere, he's going to have to head out into the mountains. They still could pick up one to three inches of snow out there. Oh, it's ringing. You better give it back to Matt, the floor guy. Actually, I left mine at home today. Cloudy skies. 28 degrees is where we're at. Winds are out of the west, southwest, 21, gusting to 32. Is anybody important calling? Or uh, No. Okay. Just thought I'd check. Numbers from around the area. 27 in Bentley, Butler, International, Midland, Steeler, Washington, you're at 2830 in Morgantown. But factor the winds in. Check it out. It feels like it's down into the single digits. Uh, Dubois, you bounce back up to 11. 11, the wind chill in Franklin, as well as 12 in Steeler. What if 17 right now in Morgantown. We take a look at live pinpoint Doppler weather radar. We're currently zoomed in on Franklin first, where we got a little bit of light snow from Franklin down to Clarion County. Uh, and it's nothing heavy, but even down in Armstrong County, we're seeing a little bit of light snow there as well. Moving to Indiana, some light snow right along the Crescent Ridge, back into Cambria County. If you're traveling along Route 22 today, right at the pinnacle of the Crescent Ridge, you could have whiteout conditions, so do be careful there. We'll move on to the south. Union on Washington, a little bit of light snow working through. It's far as low that continues to pull out of here. As it does, we're on the bottom side of it. It's wrapping that snow into us. Not going to see any big accumulations, inch to two inches possible. Uh, but most of that's not going to be on that. It's blowing the air right now. Thanks to Mercer. Butler 30 at Catanning 31 in Aliquippa. 
Cloudy skies with some snow showers, breezy conditions, winds gusting to 40 miles an hour. From there, into the mountains, Indiana tops out at 31, 33, 25 in Oakland. Cloudy sky flurry to snow showers, breezy as well, gusts going near 40, even a little above that in the mountains. Pittsburgh, 32 today, 34 Waynesburg, 35 Morgantown, cloudy with some snow showers. Snowfall forecast looks like just an inch or two possible through tomorrow. We've got yesterday. And most of it's not sticking to the ground. It's all blowing in the air, but we're still seeing some of it out there. Tonight, we'll continue to see some. If you've got a Super Bowl party this afternoon, 28 degrees, cloudy, windy. And then as you head through the overnight, 22, wind chills into the single digit. Tomorrow, 30, clouds, sun, and a few flurries. And a look at your exclusive. We'll watch four or five day forecast temperatures continuing to go. Stay right around the freezing mark, 31 on Tuesday, Wednesday, 34 degrees. Cancel late day snowflakes Thursday, 4. And scatter snow showers next weekend, Winterfest. It kicks off for us up the Seven Springs. It's going to feel like we're actually going to have some snow for the sleigh rides and ski events and all things like that. Uh, John, uh, do, do we know, do we have more on the Steelers science? Uh, right. I mean, I know, best people on it. I know we did during the week, and I, I don't want to overload the, the, secur the security guys. They had 5,000 of them. We had, thou we, had a, we had a, Gone. Yeah, we had a bunch of them ready to go out in the newspapers, and then there was a, uh, okay, I'm not allowed to, <coughs> so we're gonna say you're not allowed to distribute those. Oh. Anyway. We'll see. Yeah, but, but if we can find out that we can put more of those down there, or a place where you can pick them up, uh, we'll let you know. We've been trying to get them out all over town. You want to talk to Kelly Fry now. Kelly, and she's been set up outside yep. the hotel for the last right. week or so, and trying to get the greatest grabs. Uh -oh. who, who have you seen? Anybody? <laughs> she's gone for the cell phone here. Well, you know why, Scott? Because I just heard about Matt, and it's it's funny. I my producer, who are you calling? You've got to get on air. I said, I just want Matt to know that somebody emailed me this thing earlier this week. Can you hear it? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> We all have it this week. I don't know where it even came from. I think the Steeler email they have a cell phone number as a contact. So, okay. There to the Super Bowl. All right, that's enough of my singing, right? But hey, yeah. sure we have it and Matt's playing it in the studio, so we have it in stereo now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. That's it, right? We haven't heard this whole week. But, yeah, this week we've been outside in Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, obviously outside in this cold today, 18-degree wind chill. But we've been here outside the team hotel. So today what you're seeing, Steelers obviously had an invitation from us in today. Did see Kimo. He stopped by to say hi to his family a little bit earlier. We showed you him live on TV. Right now what you're seeing, a lot of the fans that are inside the lobby, they've been going in there to pick up all kinds of fan gear. We've got all the Steelers stuff, all the Super Bowl stuff. A lot of families are in there as well, just kind of milling about in the lobby area. But earlier this week, Channel 4 Action News anchor Sally Wigan actually had a chance to sit down with the Gardaki family and talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. What Detroit does a family do? We're sightseeing, we're seeing what Detroit's all about, and we, we've loved it so far. We really have. Cole got to ride in an assembly line car yesterday as it was being made, and it's every day you can do it. We've really enjoyed it. Old Cole more than enjoyed having dinner with his dad and the rest of the team at the Bettises and then going to the Pistons game. But is he nervous about his dad playing in the biggest game of his life? Bro, I don't think about it that way. I just want to punt the ball one single time. <laughs> And he knows what the Steelers need to do to win. Wash the heck out of my ass, Mike. And keep going, keep going. I think Joe Gordon and Jerry Stevens. And I think we'll win. I do. But go up to Seattle, too, so. Meanwhile, life goes on even when you're at the Super Bowl. Sally is getting her master's in screenwriting at UCLA. I have my class on Wednesday night, and everybody's all over the world, actually, in this class. And my teacher was laughing. He's like, nobody has any excuses for the rest of the year to not show up. Because Sally's at the Super Bowl, and she's still here in class. So no excuses. So I've been working. I've been writing every day. That is just great stuff. An inside look at one of the families involved in Super Bowl 40 and our live coverage continues here in Pontiac, there in Denver, uh, Denver Detroit, and back in Pittsburgh. Okay, all right, we're coming back in just a little bit. <laughs> Jennifer Mealy and I am live here in the other burg, cool. Greensburg. Okay. We've got crazy fans at the Manny Brothers. Welcome back to our Channel 4 coverage of Super Bowl 40, and I have important news. Oh. Uh, Liz Stevens, who hosts the right. Steelers webcast with me, mm -hmm. just informed me that the uh, ringtone that we were talking about that uh, Matt has and that Kelly was playing, right, right. available as a PDF download on the Pittsburgh Channel. Dot com. 
So isn't that nice how quickly you get yeah. this? Let's get Rosendale live in Roeville at the Giant Eagle. Hey, how you doing, Gus? I'm doing well. I'm telling you, these posters are real popular. I mean, people have been uh, driving around the area coming to pick them up. These guys came down, and they all have them all displayed here. And you can see there's Steelers pride here. They're all everybody for the Steelers. What's your prediction for tonight's game? Oh, a win. Well, yeah, we all know that. But, I mean, what do you think the point spread's going to be? Point spread? Uh, 14. 14. How's that sound? Well, that sounds good to me. Sounds good to I'll you? Up, up, up. All right. I'll, I'll call my book. What do you think is going to happen tonight? A blowout. A blowout. <laughs> uh, there's a little challenge. 14. Blowout? Come on. It's going to be a tough game. We'll deal, with, we'll deal with this in a little bit. How you doing? Indeed. Absolutely. <laughs> sure. You know, that happens to me on TV a lot, too. What's going to happen tonight? What are you, what's, what are you predicting? We're going to win. You're going to win big? Yeah. All right. Terrific. Well, guys, thanks very much for talking for me. What are we going to say here? Go. Go. Hey, and don't go anywhere. Coming up, we're going to be talking live to Governor Ed Rendell. What he has to say, his pick for the big game, coming up. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Super Sunday edition. News, your official Steelers Super Bowl station, and a live shot now in Detroit Ford Field. A beautiful day for football. 18 degrees, very crisp, and we are getting into it. Wind chill, correct? Yeah, that's yeah, okay. Right. Yes. I think we're going to get I have 36 degrees. That's my prediction Aww. on this 36th day of the year as we head into Super Bowl 40. An exciting day. Thank you so much for joining us. So many of you joining us for the entire run, uh, eight hours or so we've been on. It's been a lot of fun. And you know, right now, we have something very interesting. We'd often get to talk to the governor. You know, I think uh, Sally and Mike are out in or we're outside for deal right now in Detroit with a very special guest. Hey, guys. That's, that's, that's right. We have Governor Ed Rendell here. And this is his second Super Bowl in a row with a Pennsylvania team. Last year, though, you were doing the post game because you did the, uh, the post game talk show. Boy, the Eagles sure. had to be tough for you. Well, uh, it was a little tough. Well, I was proud of the Eagles because I thought they played a great game against both them and even broke footballs. And, you know, the Eagles had a chance to win it up to the last second of the game. So I thought they accomplished a lot. And remember, we're not like the Steelers. We haven't been to a series of Super Bowls. Just getting there was a great accomplishment for the Eagles. As this year's Steelers getting there, I think, is a good story. If you consider how out the Steelers were and what they had to do on the road to win the playoffs, it was a great accomplishment getting there. It, it's a great comeback story. Uh, Detroit, we've been covering. It's a great comeback city as well. Uh, they elected us from here today, not only to cheer on the Steelers, but to learn from Detroit. There's a lot to learn here, isn't there? Well, there's no question. Uh, Detroit is making a major, major effort to use this as the pushing off point for the revitalize, uh, revitalization of our city. I did not got a ways to go. Uh, I think in Pittsburgh we've got a lot more of the infrastructure needed to build back the city. What Pittsburgh needs, and Detroit for that matter, is to get people back living downtown. If you get people living downtown, the old rest falls into place. And that's why the PNC project was so important. The condos that PNC is going to be building, the, the units in the Lazarus building that's going to be redone. If we can get downtown living back in Pittsburgh, I think that the stadiums, a wonderful arts and cultural district, shopping, you know, to Saks Fifth Avenue, great places to shop, Kaufman's. Uh, I think the sky's the limit for downtown Pittsburgh. Governor Randall, you were just on ESPN this morning talking about cold versus getting Super Bowls, and there actually are some hard and fast rules governing that. Right. The NFL adopted a rule that says if you are if you don't average 50 degrees or higher during the month of February, you can only have the Super Bowl if you have a dome stadium. Now, you can consider the dome stadium uh, where we were doing Pittsburgh and all the Super Bowl stadiums where all of us, the private owners and the states and the cities, decided that the extra 200, 250 million dollars wasn't worth it. For one Super Bowl every many years, we use that many tools and do other things. And you're hoping in Miami, what might happen? The ultimate for me, the ultimate for me would be, <laughs> uh, you know, and of course there's some question whether I'll still be governor by this time. <laughs> but the ultimate for me as governor would be uh, to, with these looks here this year, Eagles Steelers in Miami, and I'm looking at the camera crew guys. Oh. Miami will be about 80 degrees. It'll be about 80 degrees. Yeah, I'm just speaking of contests, it looks like you'd be facing a former Steel Hall of Famer. Um, can you beat Lynn Slyhead? Well, you know, I think when an incumbent runs for any office, whether it's governor or mayor or whatever, uh, the test is really has the incumbent done a good job. It's less about the opponent than it is about the incumbent. And I think when the people of Pennsylvania consider the things that we've accomplished, the education, the economy, we have more jobs now than at any time in Pennsylvania's history, the environment, all of the uh, strides we made, adding 250,000 people to the PACE program, or to the seniors, I think to the side that I uh, 
uh, just another term, but if not, uh, maybe I'll do what you guys do for a living. Well, I understand you're a really good sportscaster. Well, uh, I do it. Uh, I love sports, and you know, look, I'm a great admirer of Lynn Spaw of Lynn Sp uh, Swan's prowess as a football player, and he does a great job as a, uh, for ABC, he did a great job as a, as a sports announcer, um, you know, and he has every right to run. People come up to me and say, it's ridiculous, the guy who's never held a office running for governor, no. It's happened He's quite got, a bit, yeah. yeah. it's happened quite a bit, and he has every right to run. He certainly has the same right to run as Arnold Schwarzenegger did. <laughs> so is your prediction you'll win re-election? Well, I never predict elections, you know, it's like, uh, uh, it's a little bit of a well, I predicted earlier we had a big rally in the Capitol, uh, and I said 27 10 Steelers. Uh, I just think the Steelers are playing the best for the ball anywhere. I think the AFC is a notch ball. See, now, as long as we don't turn over the ball, and we're a team that doesn't turn over the ball much, I think we'll win and, and win fairly with a little bit of breathing space. Who are you sitting with in today's game? Uh, Mitch. <laughs> I'm sitting with my <laughs> wife, Mitch. You know, she had a chance to go for me, as you know, as a federal judge. She's not allowed to do anything political, no fundraisers, no political events, so uh, this is a nice uh, break for us. I play golf with her. She is an amazing golfer. Well, you know, uh, I always kid Midge. Midge is Swedish. I always kid if it started younger. She didn't start till her mid-40s. She hits 17 out of 18 fairways. I said, if you started early, it would have been you would have been Annika Sorenstam, <laughs> not, not Annika Sorenstam. All right, Governor Ed Rendell, thanks. Well, thanks, guys. 27-10, your prediction. Well, All right, thanks again. Much, John and... Uh, Andrew Stockton. All right, thank you very much, guys. And with the uh, governor being here, it's interesting to note that for only the second time in Super Bowl history, we have consecutive Super Bowls with teams from the Keystone State. Super yeah. Bowl 14 and 15. There's still more the Eagles in 15. Now the Eagles late last night, like looking over all these stats and stuff. Man. <laughs> well, I'm all the Super Bowl. You're blowing my mind. Today. I, I love this game. Yeah, just stats coming out of your ears. You know, this is the coolest game in the world. That's yeah, why I love to really talk is. about it. Yeah. Speaking of the game, Special teams, we talking about earlier, really play a huge role today. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we talked about it earlier. James Harrison comes back to just deal with an injury. A very valuable special teams player. And that's the one thing Cowher stresses is special teams. He wants all his team to be sound in that area because, you know, you can be you can be uh, solid on offense, solid on defense. You make a mistake or two on special teams, you can still lose a football game. So, uh, you know, the special teams for the Steelers have been great all the playoffs and most of the season. I expect more of the same today. And earlier this week, I had a chance to sit down with two Steelers special team performers who could have a major impact on Super Bowl 40. Super Bowl 30, 10 years ago, when Mel Stone stole the game from the Steelers and the game's MVP award. On this last day of media availability, as far as the Steelers are concerned, all these journalists out here are looking for hidden heroes. That one player who may gain play, that one Steeler that may walk away with the MVP award. There are the usual suspects, Ben and the bus. But so often, special teams can swing the game. I think it will. Field position is always key, so to be key in the Super Bowl. No, I, I can't imagine not being. The athletic Antoine randall -L has already taken two punts back for touchdowns. Every time you touch the ball, you know, for me, it's just trying to score. And I have to watch myself. Sometimes I try to score without the ball. You know, that ball coming instead of catching it clean. I'm trying to run already, or you know, catch the ball, I'm trying to run already, so stay focused and catch the ball clean. And yeah, every time you touch it, you want to try to you know, get in the end zone. And then again, two of the last four Super Bowls have swung on the leg of the place here. When I was a soccer player, I'd be watching the Super Bowl, and I, and I would be, um, I would dream about taking a game winner. But um, the, thing, the thing about it is, I was playing soccer at the time, I never thought I'd be in a situation. Now I'm in the Super Bowl, it's reality. I mean, it's not like. I'm ready to suck that opportunity up because I just want to be successful and help the team win. You know, I'm a household name great, but if I was a Super Bowl ring, it'd be a lot better. And John Wall, special teamers have played a key role in the Super Bowls, and I hate to bring more statistics for you. The only one, yes, more, I got more for you. Only one has a special teams player been named most player, and I think you can guess who it is. Desmond Howard. That's right. Green Bay Packers, Super Bowl 31. That's right. And uh, see, I know a little bit. You know a little bit. <laughs> and never a kicker, but then again, you never know when it comes down to the Super Bowl. Right. Well, Scott Ward North wasn't MVP? No, no he wasn't. <laughs> now to our own special team performer, Sheldon Ingram. Sheldon. With uh, Super Bowl coverage from Super, from Super Bowl 40, the site here in Detroit, Michigan. Be back uh, later with some more of our special coverage. All right, Sheldon, thank you so much. We've got something very special to show you here. I love this. Yeah, we're talking about special teams. I think if we go to camera three, I think I, I, what I've done is I've hooked up on the, uh, on the eyesight 
back to the Baker household. Uh, Ava Baker, who is right here, who's just a month old this weekend, uh, wearing her little Troy Palomalo jersey. Look at Emma. And the, uh, yeah. And then Emma Baker. Emma, lift up a little bit. We can see the 36 on her shoulder. She's got her Bettis jersey. Hey, I, I, Emma, can you give us a Steelers cheer? I'll lean down to get the mic close. Wonderful. Stay there, A. Baker, checking in. Oh, that's great. Live over the internet from the Baker household. Oh, well, that was worth it. All the like, weird stuff you've been doing on your computer in the last four and a yeah. half hours. We're working, off. by the way, we're working on getting the ringtone on the Pittsburgh channel. It's not okay. there yet. Okay. It will be. You can download right now on PDF that uh, I'm for the Steelers sign. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, you can print out your own and then you got it. All right, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Channel 4 Action News coverage of Super Bowl 40. We're having a great time. Hope you are. Ah, oh, so nice to see all of you. And Sheldon, so nice to see you. I know you can't hear very well, so I'm just going to send it out to you. Take it away. Okay, well, I just want to give uh, some brief reflections here. This is my first Super Bowl to cover an event like this. And while we all wanted to see this in a warm weather city such as Miami or San Diego, it's still a special feeling, and that's the uh, feeling I get here. It's special not only for the Pittsburgh Steelers, not only for Steelers Nation, but even for the good people of Detroit, Michigan. You know, a lot of people spoke negatively of Detroit as being an unattractive city as we came in earlier in the week, but the people here have been absolutely phenomenal, simply warm, loving people, and a lot of Pittsburgh fans have made it their point to say over and over again of how special and how, uh, how special the hospitality has been here in Detroit here to see the Super Bowl 40. So while we're not in ideal conditions, such as in uh, 80 degree weather in Miami, it's still a warm feeling being with the people in Detroit, and it's a special feeling knowing that the Pittsburgh Steelers are at the center of a world stage event such as Super Bowl 40. Back to you. All right, Shelton, thank you so much. We've so enjoyed your reports, and I cannot believe we've uh, now been on the air, well, four hours for us, but eight hours total and still counting. We're just ticking away here. Yeah, and we've got stuff yet to cover, and, uh, you know, I think when people have waited this long, uh, that all of the excitement is, uh, is gearing toward kickoff. And, and, you know, right now, this is probably the time when the team is getting focused, because we saw Kimo Van Olhoffen just an hour and a half ago. Right. Uh, out in Pontiac, he probably still had an hour to get down to the stadium, but right now they're probably getting that speed from the little tower. He said yesterday that he knew what he was going to say, he wasn't letting anybody else know. He was going to find out how the players are. Yeah, he's going to say my short Marshall right will be back in two minutes. Super Bowl 40 on Channel 4, Pittsburgh. Presents today's special coverage, Destination Detroit. Ford Field, Detroit, Michigan. You know, Joe Stark in the Trib uh, had Dan Rooney saying, you'll never hear me say one for the thumb. He knows that there is a Steelers history, but he knows that there's a Steelers future. It's just one ring for these guys. It's theirs to go and get. And that day is today. Mm, neat stuff. 216, our Steelers coverage continues, and we're going to head out to what, Black and Goldsburg. Hey, Jen Mealy. Hey, guys, how are you? We're having a great time at Permani Brothers here in Greensburg, and I'm with the manager of Permani Brothers. This is Zach. Zach, how happy are you that we finally have a Permani Brothers in Westmoreland County? Oh, I'm excited. You know what? It's been great. We've opened about two months ago. Every day it's been packed here, and you cannot ask for anything more. The Steelers got in the Super Bowl. Get this kind of crowd in here with all these people. It's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Your food is great. We've had a great time here. Now, this lovely lady, what's your name? Gina Tuna. All right. You have traveled far away to get here, right? Mm-hmm. Where are you from? Philadelphia. All right. Well, we're glad to have you very much. Thank you. All right. Let's ask some of these folks. Game prediction score today. Oh, um, definitely Steelers 27-17. Steelers 45. Seahawks 21. 20 for 10, Steelers. All right. Now, let me show you how much Westmoreland County supports the black and gold. Check it out. Hey, we're live here in Greensburg, Westmoreland County. I'm Jennifer Mealy, Channel 4 Action News. Back to you guys. <laughs> I, I have to say I've never painted my face. Have you ever? Have you ever gone that far? Get a, um, get well, a, get a paint your face. You, you're ready. <laughs> we can tape. make the admission yeah. right now. I could see Don. Don and I are wearing a little makeup right now. <laughs> 
You had it's to a, tell. Yeah, it's a TV thing. You know, we're not proud of it, but we it's have on to. Your do, collar. But they we have to do it. it every day. All right. How are you? I still feel Thanks. manly. I do. Too. Okay, I got the good. jersey on. Come on. <laughs> it's game day. It is Super Bowl Sunday with the Steelers. How cool is that just to say? Live look on the action cam. We check the sky conditions. Cloudy skies. This building's at four miles. That's due to some uh, snow continuing to fly out there. Winds are out of the west, southwest, 17, gusting to 31. Terrible at towel in hand, ready to go. It's almost game time. Do we have the clock on there? How long? I gotta look at it. Four hours and six minutes. Oh, maybe I can get a nap in before the game. All right. Numbers from around the area. 27 in Franklin. I'm gonna set my terrible towel over there. 27 in Franklin. 28 Butler, Pittsburgh International, West Mifflin, Indiana, Latrobe, Steeler, Washington. 29 in Morgantown. We look at the wind chills though. Beaver, look at that. You've dipped down into the single digit. Nine hour, eight in Boyce. 12 in Indiana, West Mifflin. 13 in Steeler, Washington. 15 in Morgantown. Live, pinpoint Doppler weather radar. We start wide and notice the only snow not flying right in Allegheny County. We've got a little bit of a break in the action through Allegheny County. Butler, a little bit of light snow activity. Washington as well. We'll move to the north first where we see the snow flying from Franklin to Clarion to Butler. Heavier pocket there right along I-80. If you're traveling along I-80 in the next couple of hours, do be careful. From there to the south, Indiana has some snow right along the ridge tops back to Blairsville. And then on down into Uniontown, I'm breaking the action, but Washington, Steeler PA, picking up some snow as well. Satellite radar from around the area continues to show the snowflakes flying. Now, this area of low pressure is pushing off. Go ahead, throw it to me, Matt. He's got the football off camera. All right, we can use this as a weather pointer. See this right here? We see this counterclockwise rotation. Snow being pulled into us. That snow is here through the afternoon. But as we head through the late day, winds are going to be more of a problem. Mercer, you'll top out at 26. Clouds, some snow to deal with, breezy conditions. Matt, there you go. All right. Holy cotta. All right. From there, we head into the mountains where Indiana hits 31, 33 Uniontown. Clouds, some snow showers. Big story today across the region will continue to be the wind gusting to the 40 mile an hour range. Pittsburgh, you'll see 32, 34 in Waynesburg, 35 in Morgantown. Clouds and some snow showers. By the time it's all done through Pittsburgh, we're talking about an inch of snow. Most of it not on the ground. It's being blown around in the atmosphere more as you head up north and into the mountains east of the city. If you've got a Super Bowl party this afternoon, 28 degrees, cloudy, windy, scattered snow showers. Tonight we get down to 22, breezy, colder, scattered snow showers. Tomorrow, 30 degrees, clouds, sunshine, couple of flurries to deal with. Feels like winter as we head through the next five days. Look at your exclusive Weather Watch 4 five day forecast. And on into Tuesday, 31 degrees with a chance at some snow. Wednesday, 34 degrees. And on your Thursday, some snow showers and 34 degrees. And not only is it Super Bowl Sunday, next Sunday, it's Winterfest 2006. And we'd love for you to join us up at Seven Springs. It's going to be a great time up there. We're actually going to have some wintry conditions in for it as well. Perfect. All right. And I'm looking at that, that weather there on Monday. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Wendy and I, we've been trying to be real calm about not being too assumptive about victory, though feeling for it. So looking at the Monday forecast, hoping that that will be a welcome home victory mm, weather. That'll be very nice. Even though we're not supposed to go out to the airport. Very nice. All right, how about Gus Rosendale? He's been holding down the fort out in Monroeville, giving us these live shots from a giant eagle out there. Hey, you can, you can hardly hear us, huh? Well, indeed, it's a very black and gold fort, of course, and everyone has their different ways of expressing their pride here. Because everyone is yelling. But you have some of the more traditional jerseys, you have the towels, and then it gets a little more interesting as we make our way down the line. We have the, we have the burger hat there, which is big, and then this creation here, did you make this? Or? No, no, no. I went to Max and Irma's last weekend, oh, okay. and, and I got it there. And it hasn't popped on you, right? No, actually one balloon popped last weekend, but I kept it. All right, well, so. be, be careful of winds I know. and, and low-hanging you know, doors. I don't wear it outside. A terrible pop, and then right. your you know, celebration oh, will be deflated. Now, these are some bigger displays. I was talking to Chris here, and she wants, she, she's given me her hand. My mother's very excited about this. <laughs> she's given me her hand to show you. Take a look at those nails. I don't think I've seen any, I've seen a lot of outfits here today, different ways to show your pride, but look at it. How did you do that? Is it? I, mean, I had it done down at one of the nail stores at Monrovo Mall, and, and they, they airbrushed it on. Wow. Great job they did. I, I'm really impressed by that. Now, how long will those nails be in that shape? What, what, you know, well, I, these were actually done last Sunday. Wow. And they still look really good, and we're hoping that as long as we can keep them going, we're going to show our Steeler pride for weeks to come. And you give them a royal wave as they win. That, exactly. Oh, absolutely. Right. Well, Chris, thanks very much. We'll be checking in with you throughout the day, reporting live in Monroeville. I'm Gus Rose and Dale, Channel 4 Action News. <laughs> and the final
final live report coming up from the Strip District right after this. This is Dan Kreider of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Watch the Steelers in Super Bowl 40 on WTAE Channel 4. All right, here we go. Our live coverage continuing here of Super Bowl 40. We're making our final checks, our final stops. We're going to go to John Griner one more time. Good time in the Strip District. It is. Uh, people are still coming in. Here's Linda. Linda, what do you got in your right hand here? I have a dead Seahawk. <laughs> it's dead. Over here is Lou. Take a look at Lou's car. Lou, you've been cruising the strip all day, huh? Yes, I have. Last two nights on the south side. Said I wasn't going to buy anything this year, but just kept adding on the last two weeks. <laughs> okay, i got one more travel story for you. These ten women came from New Jersey all in an RV just to see the Steelers. New Jersey loves Pittsburgh! Steelers! That's going to do it from the Strip District. Live, John Griner, <laughs> Channel 4 Action News. Such a great job, John. Hey, you keep it right here. We're going to be right back and say goodbye. Stay Thank with you. us. <laughs> We wanted to show you Pontiac, Michigan one last time here at the Steelers Team Hotel where the families are now officially boarding the buses because they are heading downtown. Let the game begin. I'm Kelly Fry. I'll see you all a little bit later, you guys. Uh, nice work out there, Kelly. Oh, good for you. You have a chance to get inside now and get warm. Oh. That really is it. This is about family. This is about community. It's about team. And we've heard so much mm. from the coach, from the owner, that this is the closest team they have, sen have sensed. And we think that you know, we have been able to see that as we've looked at them. If we've seen them dining at Jerome Bettis' house this week. And you just have to think that this might be their moment. And you have made us all part of your family as well. You've awakened to us and even gone to sleep with us at the end of the day. We want to go out to Sally and Mike and live right outside Ford Field. Say goodbye to us, guys. It's been a wonderful ride thus far. It, it, it certainly has. You know, the gates are now open, fittingly, Wendy. Uh, a lot of black and gold going inside that stadium. This is really going to be a home game. You heard Governor Ed Rendell's prediction, 27-10, he said. My prediction, 31-17 Steelers. Sheldon, how about you? Well, I don't predict games. I just enjoy them. <laughs> and let's, let's go to two other guys who are going to be enjoying that game, John Burton and Andrew Stockey. Well, guys, it has been an incredible ride. JB, your final thoughts? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. It's been a great week here at uh, Super Bowl 40. The weather notwithstanding, I had a lot of fun here. And I'm um, sticking with, with my prediction. Steelers 28, Seahawks 20. I think the Steelers win this game once again by two touchdowns. Now, I really do believe this will be Jerome Bettis' final game. And what a way to go out on top. Okay, let me throw it back to you. Oh, Andrew and JB, thank you so much for that. Our coverage is going to continue. Uh <laughs> Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We're just getting started. Of course, you're going to leave your TV set right on here on Channel 4 because coming up, well, the NFL is going to take over, but the Super Bowl kick off, what, four hours away? Right, and it's going to be all, all Super Bowl throughout the afternoon, and then right after the game, you, you may see commercials during the game about, uh, about Grey's Anatomy. We're going to put that off until after the news, right. after the special, midnight, so set an open into VCR if you want that, because as soon as the game's over, we're in the post-game, we're talking to the players, we're talking to the fans, we'll have our full newscast, our regular newscast, and I think it's going to be incredible, and I think that there's so many storylines to watch tonight, yes. so many faces to watch, the faces of the room. We're going to see if, if Ben can keep that calm, if the bus can keep that force, the speed of Willie Parker, the jazz of Randall L. We're going to see that, you know, the, the, both of those lines crashing hard. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to look for Bill Cower to find Dan Rooney on yeah. the side, sidelines. I'm going to look for him when he gets that trophy. And that is the moment I'm waiting for, because that is the time that he said that the moment that he will feel most fulfilled, because this is what he is not here to do, and this is what his dream is to fulfill. I think the Seahawks are going to bring a game. I think it's going to be intense, and I think they're going to be maybe even better than Steelers fans expect. But I think that we've seen that this team, they have risen to the challenge time, and they're going to come out and play Steelers football, and we know what that is. <laughs> we look forward to seeing the game tonight. We look forward to seeing you after the game. We have a lot of fun then. Thanks for watching. Go Steelers. <laughs>